Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne again. I'm, took, I'm taking a look at a, a, a method or a time management strategy that I've been trying to understand for a little bit of time. And I think I finally figured it out. I've been test driving it for about a month now. And it tends to help me out. Uh, that's the Pomodoro technique. If you search online, you'll find a lot of resources out there, a lot of people talking about how to make this work for you. Um, but the general idea is that you work in these short time interview intervals. You work about 25 minutes in length, and then you have short breaks in between those. And the idea is that you want to basically focus for small bits of time, small meaning 25 minutes, small bits of time, uh, knowing that, okay, I'm going to ignore all other distractions. I'm going to focus on this job at hand. And then I'll take a five minute break um, to go off and do other things. So you sort of don't get boxed down or you don't get bogged down in the time. Um, but it, what you're really doing is you're just boxing out time and saying, okay, I'm going to work on these components. And I've been trying to make Pomodoro work for me. But the truth of the matter is that it doesn't really work with my schedule, or at least I thought it didn't. Um, so I really, I don't have the opportunity to sit down and just say, okay, I'm going to take my day and break it up into 25 minute segments and then half hour, uh, you know, with the five minutes of a break time because the, you know, I mean, my day, my weeks are organized, um, you know, where I have classes, I have meetings that I have to show up to. Um, so this is this current week. Um, so, I mean, you know, I have two class sessions that I have to show up to. I have a class on Tuesday nights. And then the same will occur on Wednesday. Uh, this Thursday, I had uh, what was supposed to be my research day so I could have a wide open day to do work. I was called in to sit at, at a forum. Um, and then Friday, I have a couple committee meetings here that haven't even shown up on my calendar yet. But I'm about to leave and go off to those. So I have little blocks of time that I can get work done. What is also not in this schedule here um, is that, you know, I mean, I'm basically getting up, getting the kids up, doing my morning routine, you know, starting my day, driving in and out. I'm picking up kids from school. So there's a lot of other stuff that's going on here that's not evidenced on my calendar. But for the most part, when I organize my time, I start with my calendar and um, and then make sense of it there. These are all events that I have to show up to. But once again, there's a lot of stuff that's not on here. There's not me driving to and from. There's not the kids and the family and dinner and some other things. So for the most part, everything lives there. But you'll see that my schedule will, you know, fluctuate over time. So there's, you know, there's times that I have meetings that pop up. And I have all of these little chunks of time in between. And so the challenge with all that is I try to make sense of my time in between all of those little piece, uh, those little uh, blank spots in my in my calendar. And I, I have another video on Trello where I'll organize what are the bigger projects and then what do I want to do for a specific week. And then how does that break down to the day? So when I do have those blocks of time that are free for me, um, how do I make sense of it? So, for example, this morning I have a little bit of time carved out. Yesterday I didn't have much time, but then, I mean, I have blocks of time here that are still wide open. So how do I organize that, organize that time? Typically, I'll just sit down and write. Typically, I'll sit down and say, okay, I'm just going to answer emails or I'm just going to build content for classes. And then those projects tend to expand out. Um, and monopolize most of my day. And then at the end of the day, I feel frustrated because I didn't get anything done. So then uh, through a couple different videos as I looked online, I figured out there was a way to use my Trello calendar and this Pomodoro technique as a way to make sense of how to really get part of my day uh, tamed and sort of time box areas so that I know what I have to do and when I have to do it. So the way I've been achieving the, the Pomodoro technique and what's been beneficial for me is now I can go into my Trello board. And once again, I have a, a whole video on how I use Trello. In my labels, I basically have a label, a red label for uh, Pomodoro. And what that means for me is that's a signifier that these are elements that I want to break down into 25 minute or half hour blocks of time. So as an example, I'm working on 
uh, my materials for my third year review right now, and part of that is the narrative. And so I've been working on this narrative over time. It's a 10-page document that I've, I will write and revise, write and revise. So I'll come back and forth between this. Uh, I'll come back and forth to this document multiple times over multiple days, truthfully over you know multiple weeks. But I know I sort of block off in my time in my head how much time I need to spend on this document. So thinking about Pomodoro, I basically think about okay, what, how many blocks of 25 minute or half hour chunks of time do I need to get this done? So as I'm working on the the narrative now, I know that for the most part, knowing the way that I work, if I if I have four 25 minute blocks of time or about two hours of my time. I can get this narrative done. So what I'll do is, if I look at today, I think about the amount of time that I have today, and I say, okay, I have signified this as a Pomodoro activity. And once again, the only thing that's telling me is that I've broken that down into 25 minute chunks, or 30 minute chunks of time that I have to work on this uh, piece. And what I'll also do is I'll indicate in the title how many chunks. So instead of having separate cards, what I'll do is I'll say that, okay, I have final edits that I need to complete on this. It's going to take me about two hours or four half hour chunks of time. And I've set up, I've set up those four chunks so that I can work on it. So today I just spent about a half an hour working on this piece so I can go back up to this and change this to a three. And now when I look back to this or I move from today to tomorrow or move to next week, I can say, okay, moving this over to Monday. Now I know that I still have about an hour, hour and a half that I need to continue to make edits to this document. So once again, now as I'm planning, I can look at this and say, okay, this is a half hour of my time or 25 minutes to a half hour of my time. Here is the amount of times I'm sort of going to reuse this card so that I can complete the activity. And if I'm working on this and I get it done, I just archive the card as I suggested before. So in my mind, I'm sort of blocking off these 25 minute, half hour chunks of time. And that's been really helpful for me because I can look at this morning that I have freely available or better yet, you know, on a Wednesday morning, by the time I'm into the office and, I, and I've dropped the kids off and everything is, is ready to go, I have about two hours before class starts. So I look at that two hour period of time. I want to block off about half an hour to get myself over to class early, get things started up. I also block off about half hour, 45 minutes to review my notes and materials to get ready for class so that eats up an hour. So then now we get into the situation where I say, okay, I only have about an hour of time. You know, maybe I have an hour and a half of time. And previously what I would do is I would look at that hour of time and say, oh, I can't really get that much done. Let me go off and let me search the internet or let me read or, or then I'll suck up time with email or I'll spend time uh, in social media. Now what I do is I say, okay, I have a half an hour. Well, now that I look at my Trello board, a half an hour is a lot of time because that's sucking up one of these little Pomodoros that I can easily get rid of. So that's what's been beneficial for me. And it's a little bit of a mental game is taking a look at it and saying, okay, it, previously I would say, okay, let me drop things off or, you know, here I am. I don't need to leave till three o'clock. It's two, two fifteen. By the time I get back to my office, I've got an hour. Now, if I have an hour in my day or half hour in my day, Previously, I look at it as, well, let me just jump on some email or let me just vegetate or watch a YouTube video. Now I can say, okay, well, I've got about a half an hour. I can knock off one of these Pomodoros that I have on my list and, and have these little time boxes across my schedule where I can sort of drop things in quickly in an agile fashion, get stuff done, and then don't have to worry about it later. So the way that I make all this happen is, my schedule, once again, primarily lives in Google Calendar. These are events that I have to show up to. Then I use Trello as a way to organize myself from projects to what I have to do this week. This week is based upon emails. This, base, this uh, week is based upon uh, deliverables that are coming up. 
And it's also most importantly based upon what projects I'm working on and next steps. And I'll have a video about this coming up soon. So materials move from projects to this week. Finally, they get moved over to today and things I have to accomplish today. So if I have a Pomodoro in here, I realize, okay, I'm not going to spend an hour and a half on this and knock out three Pomodoros today. I might, I might have, you know, a, a, a huge chunk of time where I can knock off two or three, but at least I know that this is earmarked or, or this is a spot on my calendar. I want to handle this. The other thing that I do is I've found this app um, and this is a Chrome app that I really like. And what it'll do is it'll have a little lightweight clock. And so the, the lightweight clock basically will block off that time because I found if I say, okay, I've got 25 minutes for Pomodoro and I just look at the clock on my computer or my cell phone, it doesn't really help. What I like is having a visual reminder to keep me focused and realizing that, hey, I have stuff to do. So I, I use this time doser app. And if I take a look at it, what I like about this is this will pop up and it's off to the side here. It pops up a little clock for me. So what I can do is I can go into the settings for this and I can change the settings um, to different time periods. But I, I typically will just leave this to 25 minutes. So if I hit the play button, what I'll do is I get uh, a little clock, a little timer, um, and I can either zoom this out so I can see just the time, or I can have the pause or start button. But what I'll do is I'll pull this and I'll leave it in the side. And I don't want to see the clock as I'm working because I tend to, f I, I feel like that's more annoying um, seeing this countdown clock. So what I usually do is, you know, I'll leave my browser off to the side and I'll sort of see this over here. So I know that this is happening. I know that there's a countdown. I know that I'm supposed to be focused here and not goofing off and working on other things. And every once in a while, I'll check over to see how much time I have left. But what will happen is when this gets down to the end and the time runs out, it'll change colors and it will go to a five minute period of time where the rest period of the Pomodoro technique picks up. Then it'll go back into the 25 minutes again and do the countdown. So I love this app. I leave it off to the side. I know there's a lot of other apps, a lot of other tabs. Um, there's tools that you can build into Trello and other pieces. There's cell phone apps that I can use. I really like having this just off to the side um, and just having this little block of color behind my browser tab helps me focus and realize, okay, we're supposed to be paying attention to 20 minutes, 25 minutes of editing that narrative. That's what we're doing now. We're not editing anything else. We're not working on videos. We're not answering emails. We're not skimming through Facebook or other stuff. Right now we're spending 25 minutes working on editing and revising. So that helps me out a lot. Um, and once again, that is the Time Doser app. So with all of this, uh, this is a way for me to uh, make sense of Pomodoro. Uh, once again, I've been trying to make sense of it for a while. It really hasn't made any sense to me at all until it was a, a recent, uh, a couple videos and a, a, a blog post that I read. I'll try and link those in the video. But I was thinking about, okay, there's a chance to make sense of these little blocks of time and sort of time box them down and, and carve out little chunks of 25 minute, 30 minute tasks that I want to complete. And the main benefit for me is now I can look at my schedule and see, okay, I have an hour or I find myself walking into my office thinking I've got a half an hour before a meeting, 45 minutes before a meeting. That's a good chunk of time that I can use to knock out one of these Pomodoros. So that's very helpful for me. So that's the Pomodoro technique. Um, I think I'm finally making sense of it, at least for me. I've had, I have a way to track it and I have a way to keep track of the time that I use as part of that. Um, if this helps you, I definitely recommend subscribing to my YouTube video. You can also uh, leave comments below if this helps, helps you. Uh, and by all means, please subscribe to my newsletter. Um, and you can also find most of my other work on my website. Thanks again.